Here's a fun fact, ladies and gentlemen, you might not know this. I actually edit most of my videos in Final Cut Pro. So of course I use a MacBook Pro when I'm out of the studio. In fact, I've been using a 2016 MacBook Pro for the past three years. Now that's been getting a little bit long in the tooth and I've been noticing a slowdown as time has gone on. However, Apple just released a new 13 inch MacBook Pro that I had my eye on because it's thin and light and it has a quad core CPU. So I'm expecting better performance than previous iterations. Hey everybody, this is Andrew and this is my review of the all new 13 inch MacBook Pro here for mid 2019. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. Today's video is brought to you by LVL Go, your one-stop shop for Windows 10 professional OEM keys, Microsoft Office keys, Steam CD keys, mini games, and so much more. And they all come in at a fantastic price. And I have some even better news. I used to give a 21% discount code for the Windows 10 Professional OEM keys. Forget that. It's now 25% off. Even better. Well, what about Microsoft Office? You need that as well? Well, no problem. I got you covered. 18% off with my special discount code. Ordering is easy and safe. Head on over to LVLGo.com for these great savings. And remember to use my discount codes and tell them Andrew sent you. Before we get to the unboxing, here's a quick rundown of the specs. What you're looking at is a 13.3 inch retina display with true tone. It's powered by Intel's eighth generation processor. It's a quad core processor. It's a core i5. It's also got the Intel Iris Plus graphics 645. It's got eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. And it starts with the paltry 128 gigabytes of SSD storage. You can configure it up to two terabytes. Of course, it has the touch bar, touch ID. It comes in a very thin and light package. We're looking at 3.02 pounds or 1.37 kilograms. It comes in at 1299 US and it is available now. But that's enough with the specs. Let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a moment. You get your USB-C cable and your 61 watt power adapter. You no longer get your extension cord in the box. Now you also get some documentation, warranty information, and of course your stickers. Now holding the unit for the first time, I have to say once again, Apple's done a magnificent job in terms of build, construction, and overall sleek looks. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you only get two on the left side are two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and that's it. On the right side, you get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. There are no other ports on this laptop. And yes, for those wondering, you can open it with one finger. Now, for those wondering, how's the display? Well, it's excellent, of course. Apple does an excellent job when it comes to the displays, and this is no exception. A 13.3 inch IPS display. It's a retina display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600, 227 pixels per inch. It's also got a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And it's a very bright display coming in at 445 nits, making this an excellent choice for both indoor and outdoor use. And it covers the color gamut really well. You're looking at 100% sRGB, 88% Adobe RGB. So for those creative professionals that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and do video editing, this is an excellent choice. You're looking at some really deep blacks, excellent contrast, very vibrant colors. I think this is a really nice display. Now, it's also a true tone display. What that means is the white balance will adjust according to the lighting in the environment. Now, I turn this off, and the reason I do so is because I do video editing. I use Photoshop, so I need it to be as accurate as possible. True tone doesn't allow me to do that. But for the everyday user, for the average user, it's a nice option to have. Now, as much as I love the display, I'm not crazy about the bezels. And this is mid-2019. I would think Apple at this point would try to get up to standard in terms of what other Windows laptops are doing in terms of their bezels where they're almost virtually bezel-less, such as the XPS 13 and others. We saw the Asus ZenBook S13, which has that reverse notch and basically has no bezels around the sides. So Apple needs to get with the program, in my opinion, as far as getting these bezels up to modern standards. But right now, they look a little bit dated in my opinion but don't get me wrong even with those bezels this is still an excellent display so this is the facetime camera 
on the new MacBook Pro 13 inch here for mid 2019, 720p HD webcam. But I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, let's talk about the keyboard. Well, you know what it is. It's the butterfly keyboard, and we know Apple's had a lot of problems over the last few years with this butterfly keyboard, whether it be too loud or whether it be there's dust particles getting inside it causing a failure, and we know the history of having to repair it and so forth, all the controversy that surrounds this keyboard. Now, having said that, it is a little bit quieter. It's a little bit better in terms of key travel, but not much. It's still a very shallow keyboard in terms of typing, and it does have decent tactile feedback but not the best. So I'm hearing reports that Apple is moving away from this style keyboard, going more with a traditional scissor style keyboard for their upcoming 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, having said that, it does have a nice backlight on it. gets really bright. It's a multi-stage backlight and it allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. The funny thing is I used to like the butterfly keyboard much better than I do now. I think it's because I've been using such good keyboards on some Windows laptops as of late that it really has soured me towards the butterfly keyboard, but that's just my opinion. Now, when it comes to the touchpad, it's a different story. I'm actually a big fan of it. It's an oversized touchpad, if you like that, and it has really good responsiveness, really good feedback, haptic feedback from that forced touch, and it really does give you the responsiveness that you'd want in a touchpad. Good two-finger scrolling, all your gestures work well, everything you'd want in a touchpad. I think Apple's one of the best when it comes to the touchpads. This is no exception. Now, another big change from last year's entry-level MacBook Pro 13-inch is the fact that you can no longer get physical function keys. You have to get it with a touch bar and touch ID. Now, having said that, the touch bar does add certain functionality to specific applications such as Final Cut Pro, where, for instance, you can scrub through the timeline. That's a pretty good feature to have. However, I think I prefer to have physical keys rather than this touch bar. I just think it's a little too kludgy, a little too clumsy. I think you can accomplish things a lot faster with physical keys. Now, having said that, there are specific programs that do take advantage of it. I acknowledge that, and some people really like it. For me, I prefer to have physical keys. And I'm a firm believer that if you're going to add touch to a laptop, give us a touch display like you'd get with a Windows laptop. It adds functionality, and it works a lot better. Now, whereas I really am not a big fan of the touch bar, I'm a huge fan of the touch ID. I think it works really well, very responsive, and pretty much registered my finger every time I used it. It also gives you a nice layer of security. Okay, let's talk performance. It's actually really good on this. You're looking at the Intel Core i5-8257U. That's a quad-core CPU, 8th generation Intel processor. You're also looking at the Intel Iris Plus graphic 645. And as you can see from these results, it did well. Now, the Unigen Heaven benchmark is obviously a gaming benchmark. And you also can see the results from the Geekbench 4, which actually did really well. Great for productivity work, doing Microsoft Office, web browsing, email, consuming media, watching Netflix, YouTube, and the like. All worked really well on this MacBook Pro. Now, as far as gaming is concerned, you can play on the medium settings, 1080p, get some decent frame rates, not the best I've ever seen. Obviously, you'd want to connect to an external GPU to give you that added horsepower to improve the graphics performance on this. So Thunderbolt 3 ports, two of them, obviously you can connect to an external GPU, but without it, not much of a gaming laptop as far as triple a titles on full settings lower them down and you might get some playable frame rates now when it comes to the thermals i was actually really impressed the new macbook pro 13 inch didn't get above 91 degrees fahrenheit or 32.8 degrees celsius remaining relatively cool when i streamed my 15 minute hd video test this actually stayed cool and i was actually happy with that now you will notice the fans kick in under heavy load not too loud not too obnoxious not too annoying now, when it comes to battery life, you won't be disappointed. In fact, it's really good. It did 10 hours and 42 minutes on my continuous web surfing test. That's over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. This is an all-day battery laptop. That's really good, especially if you do a lot of traveling, especially if you're a student or a business person on the go. Now, if you do need to plug in, they do supply you with a 61 watt USB-C power adapter, and you'll get a full charge in less than two hours, which is actually pretty good. Now, I love the speakers on the new MacBook Pro. They've been great on past iterations. This is no exception. This really does fill up a room rather nicely. You've got two speakers, one on each side of the keyboard, and they give you a really nice, full, rich sound, nice bass on it, very loud speakers, and I think they did a fantastic job. Outstanding, in fact.
Now, as far as what's user upgradable, pretty much nothing as far as I can tell. The RAM is soldered on as well as the SSD, so that's not user upgradable. The CPU is pretty much soldered on. You won't be able to upgrade that. So not much upgradability when it comes to the user. So to wrap it all up, can I recommend the all new MacBook Pro 13 inch here for mid 2019? And the answer is absolutely. This is an excellent choice, especially if you're a Mac user, you're gonna love this laptop. Here's what I like. I like its bright, colorful display, fast performance, the outstanding speakers, Touch ID worked really well, outstanding build and quality we've come to expect with the MacBook Pro line, and the great battery life. Now there are things I don't like about it, obviously you just get two Thunderbolt 3 ports and that's it. Their keyboard has shallow key travel, I'm not a big fan of that. The thick bezels are a little bit dated in my opinion, and they give you a paltry 128GB starting SSD. That to me is ridiculous. But unless that butterfly keyboard and the lack of ports are deal breakers for you, this is definitely a no-brainer, especially, again, if you're a Mac user. This is a laptop to take a look at. I would definitely buy this over the new MacBook Air. This definitely gives you better performance, especially with a quad-core processor. I'm going to give this a score of 91%, making the new MacBook Pro 13 for 2019 worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the all new 13 inch MacBook Pro here for mid 2019? I actually like it for a number of reasons. Number one, the gorgeous display. It's that retina display with True Tone technology. It covers the P3 wide gamut, 100% sRGB. You're looking at 88% Adobe RGB. So it's very color accurate also, and it's great for those creative professionals that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course do video editing. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to pick this up. I needed something thin and light to take with me out of the studio when I'm traveling. So I needed something that will obviously run Final Cut Pro and allow me to edit my videos. Now at $12.99, it's not cheap. And especially since they're only giving you 128 gigabytes of onboard storage, which is ridiculous here in 2019, 256 has got to be the minimum. Apple, you need to get your act together. Now $12.99, again, is not cheap, but again, it's still giving you a lot for the money, especially if you're a Mac user, especially if you're using Final Cut Pro, then you're really tied to the platform. Having said that, Really good battery life, all day battery life, fast charging with the supplied power adapter. Really excellent build quality. It's pretty stunning in terms of design. Although I would like to see thinner bezels here in 2019. And to me, that the display design is getting a little bit dated. They need to thin out those bezels. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. I actually like it for video editing. I'm used to Final Cut Pro. I'm very efficient. I'm very fast with it. And it helps me get the job done. So of course, I'm always going to reach for the tool that works for me the best. In this case, that's a MacBook Pro. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.